question is about waves. Figure 4 shows a wave on the sea moving towards the beach. Which one of these is correct? So, firstly, understand that waves are waves. Whether they're water waves, light waves, sound waves, they behave in a very similar way. All waves have an amplitude, which is the basically the distance from the crest to the halfway point on a graph. That's how much energy they carry, so how loud they are, how tall or destructive a water wave can be, um, how bright a light wave can be. And they have a wavelength, which is basically a point from one part of a wave cycle to the same point on the next cycle of a wave. Now, frequency is often displayed, or how you calculate it by looking at a graph, is you count how many waves there are, or how many wavelengths there are displayed on the graph. So here we have basically one wavelength here, and then another wavelength here. So the frequency shown on this graph would be 2 hertz. And at 1 hertz is basically uh, a wave per second. So 2 hertz means two waves are arriving every second. So let's read through this. Uh, which one is correct? Amplitude is the distance between two waves. No, that's the wavelength. Frequency is the number of waves arriving at the beach per second. We don't need to continue. That's it. Next, it's asking you to identify longitudinal waves. All electromagnetic waves are transverse. So gamma, infrared, radio, light, UV, they are all transverse waves. They are not longitudinal. Longitudinal waves are, for example, sound. Any type of sound wave is longitudinal, so this would be your answer. What it means by transverse is as the energy travels forward, it causes particles to oscillate, that means vibrate, at 90 degrees to the direction of energy flow. So in other words, particles move up and down. Like a water wave, if you are standing in a stretch of water and a wave machine is switched on, you will bob up and down, you won't be thrown back. Longitudinal waves, however, disturb or cause particles to oscillate back and forth in relation to the direction of energy flow. So the particles will be doing this as they're disturbed by the energy. Whereas transverse waves, they'll be doing this as they're disturbed by the energy. So electromagnetic waves or waves of the electromagnetic spectrum are basically just light waves. We think of light as visible light, but actually radio, microwave, infrared, they're all types of light really. And what you need to know about these waves, when they travel through space or vacuum, where there's no particles, nothing to slow them down, then the frequency of each of these waves is different. It can vary. The wavelength of these waves can vary, but the velocity stays the same. So in other words, the speed in a vacuum, the velocity in a vacuum, is constant. It's the same. Now, this next question arguably is the toughest question in this paper, but not if you are good at math, and it can be kind of very easy way to get two marks. But it's the kind of question that I think nationally a lot of students would leave blank because they just get a fear response or just not understand what it's asking you to do. It says blue light has a wavelength of 470 nanometers and a frequency of 6.30 times 10 to the 14 hertz. Calculate the velocity of blue light. Now firstly, remember, velocity is frequency times wavelength. Start underlining, so wavelength is here, 470 nanometers, and frequency is here, 6.30 times 10 to the 14. In other words, we have 14 positions after the point. That's what this figure looks like, so you can see why we write it like this. So, on one level, we're just multiplying these two things together, so if you probably wrote this times this, you might get a mark. But remember, the problem is, when you do the calculation, it has to be in metres, and hertz can stay the same. Step one is converting this into metres. So one nanometer is one times ten to the minus nine metres. What that means is, it's a very small value. So imagine if a decimal point was here, it would have to shift back nine positions. But it stands to reason, if one nanometer equals one times ten to the minus nine metres, then... 470 nanometers equals 470 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. So we've converted this to meters. Now I know this isn't how you write standard form. You'd have to put a decimal point there. But let's just keep this simple for now because this works mathematically. So the first thing you do is you just multiply the big numbers together, the normal numbers. Just multiply them to get that figure there. So we've literally just multiplied this by this and then separately multiply the powers together. Now that's not actually as difficult as it sounds. So we've got 10 to the minus 9 from here, multiplied by 10 to the 14 from the question here. 
Now, when you multiply powers together, you're basically, you always have 10 here, but you have to add the powers together. When you divide, you subtract them, but when you multiply, you add them together. So minus 9 plus 14 will give you 5. So when you add these two powers together, or multiply them rather, you get 10 to the 5, 10 to the power of 5. Next, you simply combine your answers. So 2, 9, 6, 1 times 10 to the 5. Now, mathematically, this is correct, but you wouldn't write it like this. The standard form has to have a number between 1 and 10. So you place your decimal point here, like I've done so here, but because that reduces it by 3 lots of powers of 10, you must increase this by 3 powers of 10 to maintain its value, because if you didn't have this increase, this number would not equal this number. But by increasing the powers here and reducing here, they are the same value. So that's your answer.